Hello once again, I'm Doc Rotten, and this is Horror News Radio, the official Gruesome Magazine podcast. Back with me again this week is the scariest, goriest, bloodiest co-host on the net. Yes, the one and only award-winning film mucker, Christopher G. Moore. How you doing, sir? What's up? Glad hey. to be back on here. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about a uh, another Netflix offering. So this is fun. Uh, the film is Nobody Sleeps in the Woods Tonight. That's a that's a, that's an interesting title, but it could be like one of those weird romance ones with that. Title. <laughs> it's like what a strange title. Yeah, I mean, you know, they kind of explain it in the movie what it's for. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. It, it is a weird title. I actually really like the explanation uh, when we get to that. I, that actually won me over. I always thought it was a weird title, but once I heard that, I was like, okay, okay, okay. I get it. Um, all right, this film, what are we talking about? We're talking about Nobody Sleeps in the Woods tonight. Uh, it's airing on Netflix. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get our first impressions. Uh, we're going to talk about the film a little bit, and then we're going to wrap things up with our favorite scene, our score one to five, and, of course, our final thoughts. So... Uh, what are we talking about? We're talking about Nobody Sleeps in the Woods Tonight. Uh, it started streaming October 28th. Hopefully you're watching this. A group of technology-dependent teenagers go on a hike in the woods without access to their smartphones. Oh, denied. <laughs> they will have to fight for their lives with something they have never seen, even in the darkest corners of the Internet. In the face of the danger lurking in the woods, they will discover what true friendship, love, and sacrifice are. All right, this is a Polish horror film. It might even be the first Polish slasher film. Yes, <laughs> it might be. Uh, it is, of course, uh, directed by Bartos, Bartos Kowalski. I'm going to screw these names up, so forgive me. Uh, it's written by Bar uh, Kowalski and Jan uh Kwensinski and Morella Zar uh, Zaradkowitz. Uh its cast is uh full of other names I'm gonna have trouble <laughs> pronouncing. Uh Julio um Waniwa Narkowitz, maybe Michael Lupa and Victoria Kazowiska. Man, if I ever go to Europe. I am going, I'm, I may never come home and you may never find me. <laughs> They're kind of just like, oh my gosh. Uh, apologies to the entire country of Poland. All right. Uh, this was an interesting film and one I've been looking forward uh, all month on Netflix as part of their their uh, selection of films because the, the earlier films that are on it uh, tended to be uh, a little bit more kid-friendly. Uh, and this one seemed to be a little bit more gory and not kid friendly. And there's a couple other films that came out after this. I'm looking forward to, and maybe we'll talk about those later in the week as well. We'll see how things go. Uh, but I was looking forward to this for this, uh, the slasher element of it. And uh, yeah, just had, had things that looked very familiar and stuff that, you know, we don't get enough of these days. And now we're going to find out if that's a good thing or a bad thing. All right. So our first impressions of this, what are they? Christopher, I, I want to hear your impression first, sir. You know what? I, I wasn't really sure what to think about this film. Um, uh, Cause yeah, like you mentioned previously, I don't know if I've heard of a Polish slasher film before. Um, but I think the one thing that I took away from this film, it feels, it feel, you can definitely feel the, uh, that they have appreciation appreciation for American horror and yeah, American yes. slashers because it, it, and there's even that American sensibility in how they tell the story, even in some of the characters. Cause there's a, there's a one, there's a nerdy character. That's almost like the, the nerdy character from scream to some degree where he's like, well, in horror films, this happens, yep. um, which actually he was the character, even though he could be annoying at parts, he was the character I could relate to a lot. So I was like, why does anybody listen to this kid? Um, <laughs> But um, but yeah, I I I mean it it ha it it definitely has the 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 um the elements that you find in a lot of slasher films. You have different characters. You have the sort of the you have the 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 jock guy. You have the 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 sort of the the promiscuous girl. You have the nerdy guy. Um, you, you, you know, so it, it it definitely has those elements that are known in like the Friday Thirteenth films. You have a killer that looks like a like a a rash ridden version of the, the hatchet 
character from yeah, Adam Green's Hatchet too. films. Um, and there's even a, a sci-fi element too, which a little bit of venom, a little bit of things thrown in that sort of adds a different element to it. Um, but I, you know, I, I really enjoyed this film. Um, you know, I, I really love the, 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 uh, the really, the, the female main character that played Zosia. Um, I liked her character a lot. Um, and how they sort of play in her backstory. There's like one part that's very horrendous. Horrendous. You can sort of see how that <laughs> oh, she's so, goodness. uh, so, uh, has PTSD about things is the situation that she had to deal with involving her family. There's a scene involving her dad. It's like, Oh my gosh, I've never, I've never seen this kind of thing before. Um, so yeah. And, and, and the, the, the cinematography is really good. Um, this this is on on a better level than some slasher films are shot, I'd say. Um, and uh, there's a lot of really interesting characters. You know, it also plays off of the. I think there's a, the, with a lot of the characters. The cool thing is, um, there's a twist. There's not a twist, but there's a there's a there's a, a different layer to a lot of the characters. That a lot of times they're not exactly who you think they are, and then you have this revelation of learning a little bit more about them, you know, and then some characters are a little bit more evil than what they are, you know, so you can sort of see a little bit of backlash against like uh, religion and Catholicism a little bit there. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, but yeah, and I love that because I think these, these, these characters don't feel very one dimensional to me. And uh, so, yeah. And, 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 and also you have that element where, you know, like when you're dealing with um, a lot of current movies, technology always plays a big, you always have to think about that, like, like that, you know, why wouldn't somebody call the police if something's happening? Well, here you go to a camp where they take all your technology away. So that adds an element of vulnerability to these characters. Uh, at least those ones that don't sneak something in. Um, but even then it's not enough to really save them. Um, so yeah, I, I really, I really enjoyed this film much more than what I expected because I really didn't know going into it that it was going to have this element of sort of like, um, uh, really poly, uh, it's, it's, well, it's, I feel like I'm making a, a, a pun, but for a Polish slasher film, it's very polished. <laughs> it's a polished Polish <laughs> film. <laughs> Oh, you're making it worse. <laughs> you're making it worse. Yes, it's making it worse. So yeah, I I really enjoyed it. I like the characters. Um, and I think yeah, I feel like I bring this up on every podcast, but if you make characters you care about and the shit hits the fan and they have to deal with violence or deal with something, you feel for them. Because there's some there's a there's a moment between the Zosia character and the the nerdy kid. I can't remember what it is the character. Is Joy? Name. Joy. Yeah. Um there's a moment between them that's heart wrenching and hard to watch. And you almost want to, you almost try to put yourself in their shoes. Like, what would I do? Um, you know, I, I think, I think the only thing that's that I think the weird thing is like, you have these normal characters and then you have these two killers that feel very supernatural and, and almost from a different horror film, you know? So that, cause they seem, they seem more like your traditional slasher character you know with a specific look um i think that, that that that's that's always a little bit weird and then you have things that that feel like there's like a uh there's a, a sleeping bag thing that kind of calls back to a certain friday 13th movie um so you have those things that kind of call back to other films when it comes to kills but also there's there's a there's one moment that's very shocking that i won't give details about because i think you have to see it and I love it when you have just like normal moments where uh, uh, some element of horror sticks its foot in and you're like, oh, I was not expecting that. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I love it because, yeah, I love it because you get to know these characters. You get to see these certain layers of who these characters are and how they deal with these situations. And so it's not just because uh, I think some slasher films are known for having one dimensional characters where they're just there to be targets for the killer. And this one, you see them and you feel for them, and not and all these characters, at least the main characters, are not are not really evil or anything. They're just human. They all have their flaws, but you care about them when they get killed, and so that's that's the important thing of of, of doing a great horror film. The music is a little bit weird, though. 
the score, whoever did the score is very weird in parts. It's almost like elements of theremin or some kind of weird that that I felt like there was one part. It almost felt like a, a it's not like over the rainbow or something. There's some kind of like it was like some kind of weird. I was like, I was like, what is this music? Um, but yeah, overall, and also I think the, the interesting story behind how these killers or killer become is really interesting. Yeah, the origin story really kind of the, the backstory, if you will, really yeah, really uh is uh, a surprise, really a surprise, and and well, well, do, well, well executed and um, well timed. There was everything about how they reveal that that revelation. Ha, that's redundant. Uh, was uh, really worked for the film. It just uh, the pacing, the placement, the editing, the the idea, the concept. Uh, yeah, there's a lot to like there. I I really enjoyed this. I I wasn't sure I was going to at first. Uh, at some time, at one point, I thought maybe I had gotten the wrong impression about the film and it wasn't going to be what I was looking forward to. It gets to what I was expecting uh, fairly quickly. <laughs> and when it does, it's a blast. Uh, there's it, it, it's, it's very Friday the 13th gore, but more of the slapstick gore than the you know the first one, which was a little bit more gruesome gore. Not that it doesn't have gruesome gore, but it's played for uh, its uniqueness and played for its over the topness or, or sometimes for a laugh or, you know, the oddity of it, as opposed to, uh, you know, some of the first things, the origins of, uh, you know, slasher films, if you will. Uh, but it, it I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, there are some awkward pacing issues the film has especially when it comes time for the cop to enter the scene it felt really weird the stinger is set up really strange it pays off but it's really strange uh there's a uh, one of the characters makes it back to the council thing and the priest that's there and that's a really awkward weird scene uh and i'm not sure how much of it is uh, you know lost in translation there, there could be some of that but at the same time uh, what you're saying about the characters is really true. Even the character, so the characters do kind of have a uh, kind of get at each other, and you, you know, one of them becomes you know the the bully, if you will, air quotes, and the other the victim. And but at the same time, you still care for all the characters. You the, even the the more sour ones, if you will, uh, still aren't so bad that you don't that you you know, you can't. There's nobody in here that you're going. I can't wait till they die. <laughs> you know, that, can they be first? Uh, no, because there really isn't. It's um, uh, although our lead, the Zosa character, certainly is the standout one, and I would say Julek becomes an equal. It, it not at first. It takes a while to establish him uh, because he has to kind of get over a, a certain flaw the character has, and once he kind of gets over that, he he really does become. A character you 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 more than root for, and by the time the scene you're talking about, um, you know, uh, it yeah, you know, then you are absolutely it. It actually does kind of choke you up. You're like, no, no, find a way. Uh, and there is some surprises. Uh, the origin of the surprise. The uh, there's a, a duality that's going on here. Uh, if I can use that word, that's a bit of a surprise. Uh, uh, setting yeah, it's, it gets set up, and then the reveal just you know sends it home. Um, there, there, there's also a real surprise because you know every 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 monster has to have a mom, right? <laughs> when they're a slasher you know, or so, some kind of relative, and uh, uh, what, what happens there is um, <laughs> rather interesting and fun as well. It gets really gory. Uh, body parts everywhere. I, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, didn't they chew on a finger? Yes. Yes. And I think they drink the blood out of a severed arm. There's some really gross stuff. Uh, there's actually one incredibly terrific kill. This not may not be the most original kill. I think I've seen it in other things, but the way they do it is a lot of fun. Uh, and it involves the, the police officer. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> so so it has it i think it will satisfy fans of slasher films it, it it's not breaking a whole lot of new ground it's it's not necessarily 
uh, extraordinary or an overachiever, it, but it is, it definitely uh, hits it, its own marks. It, you know, it doesn't try to be more than it is and it, it doesn't fail in being what it wants to be either. So it's, it's a success in that, right? It, it, it's straight up what it is and straight up good in that respect. Um, and kind of gets a few extra points for the unique origin story of the, of the bad guys, of the villains. So, um, yeah, I enjoyed it too. What can I say? How, how'd that happen? Yeah, although I will say, like, uh, when you have the flashback of the little twin boys, <laughs> they, look like, they look like those two kids from The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. I don't know if you remember that Nickelodeon show. Oh. Um, uh, uh, not, not, I didn't, I didn't want to, but now I do. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I think that's, I think that's the element, um, that really added an extra layer because there's almost that, that sort of, uh, it, it's definitely not the same, but you know, sort of like the blob, you know, kind of like <laughs> the opening of the blob thing. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it has that kind of element. It's like, oh, wow, this is an interesting spin on this. And, the, you know, these are, and so that that adds, a, these aren't just like, this isn't just a killer who right. went crazy. <laughs> right. It, it had me a little worried because, you know, there's a lot of horror films that kind of take a deformity and they twist it into a monster. And, you know, th these, these, the, the the serial killer here, the murderer here, you know, has all these boils and is very ugly. And I was like, oh, you know, are we doing that again? But we're not. We're not. And that really made me happy. Uh, and like you said, a blob element to it. And yeah, I mean, although again, I, I think I think the one thing is you can sort of see that they're they were definitely inspired by American art. Uh, especially slasher cinema yeah, yeah because a lot of the kills have been done in different ways you know uh there's even a fargo element if you get my drift um, oh there is oh my god that's uh, right there is a fargo uh, there's you know there's different ways you know even and and you know even my me pointing out that the kill the killer looks like the killer from hatchet um uh, was it Cra crowley or whatever um Victor Crowley. And so, but he looks like he was like Victor Crowley just had really bad boils, boils. all over his face. <laughs> like the size of a, a large muffin. But yeah, but again, again, there's the, the way he kills that cop is similar to I think there's a kill that's in one of the the uh Victor Crowley films, just the same, the hatchet oh, films. I'm sure, I'm sure. Um so yeah, yeah. I mean, but at the same time, um it definitely has it, it definitely feels like like one of the more humorous like Friday 13th films cuz you know even the cop listening to him say about talk on the radio or talk to hooker in the car you know things like that are kind of funny uh, but it, even the, the way the characters are like but I, I think for me like the most endearing part was just the nerdy guy who's who's trying to trying to find some common ground with this the quiet girl by talking about movies and, and they're, they're, they're them calling her Sarah Connor and, you know, the whole Terminator thing, which there's a whole arc to that. That's like heart wrenching and sweet. Um, yeah. But, uh, Julek gets, you know, gets his first kiss in this film and holy crap, that's a gruesome scene. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. In more ways than one. Um, well, I think uh, to me, the more gruesome thing is when the, when the killers like got the blood filled shoe and I was like, what are you going to do with that? <laughs> Cause it looked like he was going to lick the blood out. I thought, if he's going to drink the blood out of that, I'm going to have to turn away. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think, but I think compared to other films where you, you like, Oh, well that's been done in this or that to me, it, 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 it's it didn't bother me it was like oh this is kind of cool that, that that you have these foreign filmmakers that sort of have an appreciation for what's come before and you can see them trying to do their own thing and for me it, i think i think the characters in this are much more interesting than in some some of the friday 
13th films, you know, they, they, they're a little bit more fleshed out than some of the characters you might find in some of those films, even though I love the Friday 13th films. But for me, those films are more, a lot of times are more about the kills than they are about the characters. So. Right. Almost always. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this, this one you have, you have, I mean, granted, I think some of the kills aren't overly gory in parts, but, um, but, uh, but yet, it, it you know you also have characters you care about, and they feel like real characters, who who sometimes aren't exactly who you think they are. You know they have, and then you you know, I think I think that the priest characters seem to be much more of a. Uh, I think that's the only character that felt a little bit like more of a character or yeah. like a play off of these things. Where it's like, ooh, this this priest isn't who he. Uh, a little bit, a little bit of a red herring. Yeah, yeah, and then you have, and then you have that almost like a Pulp Fiction moment. <laughs> it's like, oh God, where are we? Go I was really scared where that was going in that scene. Not to give anything away, but I was like, oh, I ha really hope they don't go there. And luckily, they didn't, they didn't get to that specific point. Uh, he's only well. There are certain. Uh, let me, without being spoiled, there is there is a few character or one character that I didn't mind getting off. <laughs> <laughs> if you get my drift so uh, but yeah yeah it's it's it, to me it was a fun film and and it's shot really well visually it's got some really nice sequences um and some some surprise moments which allows it to rise above then a lot of these sort of like fly by night you know made for home video yep. slasher films you see you know i think th there's a there is a craft to how they there, there's even like a, uh, almost like a, a Quint character that we meet up in a shack in the woods too. Yep. Um, so, uh, but yeah, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it. I, I did too. And I would say that it, it's, you know, it's made in a way that even the familiar elements, they feel more like an homage than a ripoff. Right. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Uh, it's so more it, like more of a love letter, I would say. Right. Right. Well, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. So, you know, it's out of respect, not out of, just ripping them off. Uh, you know, there are almost every kill. You can kind of go there. Not all of them. There, let's put it this way. There's plenty of body parts, heads roll, all kinds of things. Uh, and a couple interesting weapons. So it's got, it's, it's got its fill. Uh, and I, I, it, I was, like I said, I was a little concerned at first, you know, it took a while for me to warm up to the situation and the characters. But once I did, once they got to where the camp was and started kind of interacting, uh, I, I really got on board quick and really enjoyed uh, the characters, each one, because each character kind of has an interaction with another character or two. And so we get to know, you know, the entire crew, except for maybe, you know, sleeping bag boy. Um, <laughs> uh, but it's a, yeah, so yeah, I mean, it's on Netflix. It's good and gory. It's uh, and it's it'll be a lot of fun for horror fans. I think I think most most horror fans will enjoy this. It it definitely does not want me to go make me want to go camping anytime soon <laughs> or, or, and it also does not give me confidence in camp leaders. Uh, no, no, uh, no. They may, this one, there's a camp leader that makes some stupid decisions <laughs> that they should have just got out of there, but yep. oh, well, what's well, you going to do? You know, uh, yeah. It, it plays back on that phone thing, right? Cause there, somebody did sneak a phone on and that one phone is, in a place where you can't get to it. So you got to try to get to it. And that never pays off. Never. There, you know, you needed that guy from scream. <laughs> like, this is the rule. Don't well, do yeah. If, if only they listened to the chubby nerdy guy, they, they probably could have gotten out of there, but no, they, they except didn't for, listen to him. Except for a couple of them. Horror but, movie knowledge sometimes does is, is a very important part of escaping situations. Fight or flight. Right. So a little bit more flight, what I'm saying. <laughs> <Help these Yeah. laughs> All right. Well, that's our discussion. And now we're going to go into our final thoughts, our score, and uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, our favorite scene. You want to know what our favorite scene is, especially if you've already seen it. Uh, so we'll do that here shortly. Because first, we're going to ask you a favor. <laughs> please subscribe it'll help other people find us and uh help that you know youtube algorithm you've heard all that much about uh also hit the uh like button hit the uh, bell if you want to get notified just just bang that thing ring it ring it ring it hey come on 
All right, leave some comments down below uh, and let us know uh, how your Halloween went for 2020. <laughs> yeah, I hope you banged that thing for Halloween, if you know what I mean. All right, let's do this. <laughs> let's, uh, let's do our final thoughts on score and favorite scene. Christopher, you're up first. Um, yeah, so I enjoyed this. Um, and, uh, I, you know, I think that if you have a love for slasher films, then you can sort of see the love letter or the homage that they've done in this film that that has a much more American sensibility to it. Um, it definitely has a contemporary feel because it has that you have these kids who uh, had trouble in school because of technology, you know, whether it be phones or video games. And so I think uh, how technology rules their lives uh, and I think that's that that's a great scenario to put people into when it comes to any kind of horror scenario. If you don't have the technology to rely on to deal with the situation or to call the police at the last minute, that that puts you in, in a much more vulnerable position. Um, but yeah, I, I think I think the, the the one of the strong points of this movie is the characters. I think they're much more interesting, much more fleshed out characters. Um, you care about these characters. So when they get offed, you feel for them. Um, and each character has a sort of a moment of revelation where you learn a little bit more about them. Uh, that sometimes they're not exactly who you think they are that, you know, this character isn't just weird. They've had a, you know, a horrible thing happen to their family or, you know, uh, sometimes people aren't exactly who they are or they try to portray something they're not. Uh, or they try to be the opposite of who they are to deal with their own situation because their their family may not be accepting of this or that. And I love that aspect of it. I think mm -hmm. it works out well to me, these characters seem more real than a lot of American films that deal with teenagers today. Um, so playing into that aspect, I think um, really shows that they did a really, really did a really great job of sort of making us care about these characters. They feel like real characters. Um, of course, I really love the, other than the the main badass female character, the Sarah Connor of the group. Yes. Uh, or the, the, not to give anything away, but final girl, I guess. Um, I love the nerdy kid, you know, although in, he, in his nerdiness, he sort of uh, uh, doesn't exactly make situations better because I, I think what a, one of my favorite moments with him is when he's worried about the situation and, and they're going off and he's like explaining the, the, uh, the storyline to a werewolf, werewolf in London, <laughs> which, you know, if you're talking to somebody new may not like you may make them more scared, like, Oh yeah, these people go off and nobody cares what they do, blah, blah, blah. Um, but you, you could see his nerdiness, his love of, of video games and horror movies and stuff and how he plays that into how he, his interaction with people, um, that seems to be, and that's, that's me in a nutshell. That's, that's how I communicate with people is uh, through my love of movies and especially horror movies. So I could really relate to that, but yeah. And I love, I love the the storyline behind the, the villains. I think that that adds a different, that makes it a little bit different than some of the ones we've done before. You know, it, it seemed a, a little bit more unique to some degree, even though that pays homage. I mean, the, the, the you know, there's, there's a, element of the of any kind of those meteorite type mm -hmm. movies and stuff um so having that sort of sci-fi element to a standard slasher film sort of added a, an extra uh cool layer to it um so yeah i enjoyed it um if i were to give it a rating i'll give it a four out of five i really i really oh, wow. enjoyed it i really enjoyed it um much more than what i expected um because I've watched a few films lately um, that aren't American. Like, I, saw, I watched this movie, Cadaver, recently that's on Netflix. Oh, nice, yes. That's interesting, but doesn't make a lot of sense. So this one, I feel like, but at the same time, this one definitely feels like it's a love letter to American cinema. So, And I think that you can see that they really really wanted to have a passion for the telling this story and made it very interesting. And they had a, a really interesting villain, even though it feels like an amalgamation of different things. Um, but to me, this stands out more than some of the other sort of foreign horror films I've seen in a while. So that's why I would definitely give it a really good rating. Cause I enjoyed it. I'd watch it again. 
uh, it was very enjoyable. And I love the characters, especially the main female character in it. Mm-hmm. Her dealing with situations and having to step mm-hmm. up and like, you know, th- th- there's a, a great moment involving a, a police car that I was actually cheering for her. Um, so yeah, um, as for favorite, mm, favorite scene, um, I, I think I'll have to go with what I talked with before. There's a scene between, um, the, um, the main girl and the nerdy guy. There's a really heart wrenching scene between them that I think is so well acted. Um, excuse me with one of the characters having a hard time being able to, to speak. Oh, yes. Um, and that whole situation and, and how they deal with that. It, it was, uh, yeah, it was, I was like, this is a really powerful scene. Yeah. That it, was you a, don't... It, was, it was a better scene than you would think would be in a film like this. Oh yeah. And it, and it definitely is a step above from a lot of scenes, any kind of scenes like that you see in like horror films or slasher films in general. Um, and I think, again, I think it, I think they did a great job with casting these young people. And that scene is, I think is a very, it's hard. It's, 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 you can't look away, but it's also hard to watch, you know, mm. cause you, you, again, you feel like, what would I do if in that situation, if it'd be hard to do, you know, um, and how, how also how they tie in the, the Terminator thing and, and uh, her background and her, uh, uh, you know, her, her flashback thing and all that stuff, it all comes together to create a really powerful scene that you would never think would be in any kind of slasher film in general, let alone a Polish one. So, so yeah, I give major props. I think um, I, I really, really was entertained and enjoyed this, this film that, um, you know, if, if it were made, as an American film probably wouldn't have a lot of the, these cool elements of it. Yeah. You know, that's a good point. I don't think it would. I think, um, the origin of the, you know, the, the location of the film where it, orig- where it or- originates from <laughs> I'm stumbling over this is, is part of what makes this work. You know, there's, um, it, this film surprised me. Let's put it that way. I, I wasn't sure what we were going to get going into it. Uh, uh, you know, it was going to be a slasher film. And I've seen a, another of European slasher films because there's other countries that have been doing slasher films here recently. And some have been uh, interesting in, you know, certain ways and maybe duds in other ways. And it, it's been really uh, interesting sketching these films. So this is the first one from Poland, if you will. And um, uh, what I liked about it was how they embraced this uh, the sub the subgenre, right? The the slasher subgenre. It just they just made a slasher. It was straight up slasher film. There's no if ands or buts. It's a slasher film, and the only thing that is slightly out of the ordinary is you know the the meteorite that starts it all off. But that you know who cares about that, right? I mean, I, I like it, but it's not. You know, it's it's just it's just a starting point. It's not necessarily what's driving the story uh, as far as the slasher elements in and of itself. Uh, you could take it out; it would still be the, uh, a very similar film, although you wouldn't have that unique uh, origin point. And there would be a couple scenes that you couldn't have because of it. Uh, there's there's at least one scene that happens uh, earlier on that that it's straight up because of that. And then, of course, uh, well, maybe the stinger has a little bit to do with it too. Though throw that out there i uh I, I think our leads are fantastic matter of fact i think all the main actors are fantastic there's a couple of supporting characters that got under my skin a little bit uh some of the camp counselors that don't go with them yeah. <laughs> i was like oh you're a little too corny um and the priest guy annoyed me i, I just i, I kind of wish they had done something a little different there but outside of that everything else was high marks right on point that the kills were really interesting and got gruesomer and gruesomer as we went along, right? Well, exactly what you want in a slasher film. Um, no character is spared. Uh, you know, everybody's put through their paces and you know, you have the final girl element like you did all the, everything's there. And it was very, very satisfying and, and a very 
fun, uh, very fun, <laughs> uh, extremely entertaining film. I liked it. Uh, I'm going to go with 3.75. Um, definitely worth the watch. It's on Netflix. I think you'll have a fun time if you watch it. If this is out by Halloween and you watch it by Halloween or even after, I think you'll still enjoy this, getting your horror movie fix from Netflix, your Netflix and chill, if you will. I My uh, favorite scene, um, the one scene, okay, so there's a lot. And, and I would say my straight up scene is the, the kill with the cop. Um, I, but that's not the one that I think, impressed me the most and the one that impressed me the most isn't really gory in and of itself or special i just really loved how it was shot uh so there's one particular girl that's uh more promiscuous promiscuous permi ah, than the rest right and she's you know finding out this one this one boy is not you know not really interesting so they're they're kind of having a moment uh you know becoming really Looked like they were going to become really close friends, right? And they're okay. Something happens. <laughs> that's that, that's the moment I was talking about. It's a very shocking moment. That like, well, the shocking moment oh, yeah. isn't it? I like the shocking moment, but after that shocking moment, the camera is like because they're at a lake, and the camera is like at in the lake looking on shore. Oh and yeah, and it's like and. The shot, so that's the shot that really impressed me. It's after all this, oh, what the heck just happened? You, it's just so casual and it's so like a toss like, away, I didn't a like, toss dude. away moment. And I was like, that was cool. That was so well shot and so well, it's so simple, right? But yet so effective. And I don't know. Uh, there's a lot more I could I could choose from decapitations to death scenes to you know drinking blood out of an arm or chewing on a finger or uh a, a kiss that should never happen and uh <laughs> anyway uh there you go that's it that's it that's it i'm gonna stop there or i'm gonna give it all away <laughs> all right that's our review of nobody sleeps in the woods tonight it is playing on Netflix, check it out. Let us know what you think. Christopher, thank you so much for joining me tonight. This is a lot of fun. Oh, no problem. I mean, uh, as someone that uh, grew up loving 80 slashers, this film felt like the closest thing to that. There's even a, a sex scene <laughs> as well. There, the there is. There is. It's it's actually a pretty good one, too. Boobs and blood. Yeah, it's yeah. a well well done one. Yeah. No, I always want boobs and blood, right? <laughs> All right. Uh, well, with that, I think we should say goodnight. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>